Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the It's Just Dinner podcast. I'm your host, Tom Robinson, and sitting across from me, as always, Bob Walls. Tom, it's great to be here. It's great to be with you. Good to see you. Show today. What an exciting day yeah, we is. have. It is. We've got a big guest here. We're finally made big time. We're hit the big time, finally. Yes. Um, this is exciting for us. Yes. This is uh, an online dating expert, this, Julie Spira. This moment. This could be the moment that we push ourselves up over the top. Over the top. Because now we're going big time. This we're, is we're it. Get, we're booking guests here that are national celebrities. <laughs> So our this is our guest today is Julie Spira. Yeah. Julie is for over 15 years she's been a cyber dating expert. Uh, she's success, successfully nav- navigated her way through the web, which I'm excited to talk to her about that how that happens. And she says we're over 250 dates and four marriage proposals. She's learned to see the red flags in cyber dating world. Wow. She's also the host of a weekly radio show called Ask the Cyber Dating Expert. And the author of the best-selling book, The Perils of Cyber Dating, Confessions of a Hopeful Romantic Looking for Love Online. Wow. We'd like to welcome our guest, Julie Spira. Welcome, Julie. Hello, Bob and Tom. Thanks for having me. Sure. Great to be here. I, I guess my first question, I'm just going to jump right in here. How does one become a, 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 a dating coach and an online dating expert? Great did you, question. Did you see an ad in the paper? Or something? <laughs> I don't think when I went when I went to college and I got my degree in broadcasting and television radio, there was no oh, such thing like as online yeah. dating. Yeah. No, me <laughs> so too. Yeah. What What happened is I found myself single. I was a technology executive, so I was immersed in everything tech, and I ended up joining an online dating chat room because in those days it was dial up internet and chat rooms Mm -hmm. to see if I could replace my former boyfriend with someone new (laughs) and (laughs) and then I quickly be mastered the you know fine art of how to create an irresistible dating profile my friends became jealous so I started writing their profiles they started getting Mm -hmm. married and I knew I was on to something yeah so you, so you built this career from the ground up, literally. You, you, you were your subject when you started. I, I was the initial subject, but I think everyone goes through a heartbreak at some point in their lives, and and that's where I was. And I, as I said, I love technology, and suddenly I'm immersed in the intersection of love and technology. And now I've been doing this for 28 oh. years. Wow! Wow! Did you ever replace that boyfriend? <laughs> yes, I did with somebody I met online. And oh, then I there, you go. there you go. Yeah, so you've so being doing this from the very beginning, you have seen a lot of changes in online dating. Um, so and maybe tell us like kind of where it started and what where is online dating today? Well, when I first started coaching singles on finding love online, again it was we're so you know really really spoiled with you know fast speed Wi-Fi and if we don't have high speed Wi-Fi you know we start to complain that you know there's a little glitch in the internet connection but at this point everything was done on the telephone and it was the sound of a screeching modem and <laughs> it sounds like something from a history book but some people do remember that I and do dating dating sites were charging by the minute on how long you were online this was on love at AOL and uh, eventually uh, you know, after I started, then then Match.com was was created after I started, and then five years later, eHarmony was started. So suddenly, singles who weren't managing to find someone on their own, either through school or through friends of friends, took matters into their own hands and started looking for right. love on the internet. Hmm. Now, now have, have we we've seen this. It'd be interesting to see if you have as well that there has. We've actually seen less dating, we think, because of technology, that, that, that people are not as astute in interpersonal relationships yeah. as they once were before the technology. Have you seen that, too, or is that just a, a regional problem here? I think it's a demographic problem because I'm seeing more and more older people embrace um, digital, digital dating, and these are people that perhaps you know got divorced or a spouse passed away and they're actually using online dating apps for the first time. But what I'm noticing with singles, you know, 18 to 25, frequently they're confused about, are they on a date or are they just hanging out? They don't right. know how to define the relationship. Right. 
and, and, and there's also the confusion that we see a lot in the country is people legitimately looking to meet someone and then people wanting to hook up. A and there seems to be a, a fear that comes because some people don't feel safe when they go on dating apps. Do, do you encounter that too in your coaching? I think the whole hookup culture that was really prevalent maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, um, even just before COVID probably, was a concern for people that were looking for a serious relationship. Right. So what I would encourage them to go on sites that really had more success for marriages, more success for long-term relationships. But then there was this shift and the shift happened with COVID when people were home and people were lonely mm -hmm. and they were connecting and having going on virtual dates and finding these digital pen pals that didn't necessarily live in their same city just to find a connection. And as a result of you know what happened during COVID in such a scary time, the, the um, needs for people to go into a meaningful relationship you know, are really, really dramatically higher than people looking oh. to hook up. Well, that's so good. I did that a makes, survey. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I did a survey if anybody wants to check it out. It's at dating mm. at the age of COVID 19.com. Mm. And I asked the simple question is, how has your dating life changed due to the pandemic? And 83% said they were looking for a long-term relationship, a meaningful relationship more than ever. And wow. only 3% said they couldn't wait to get back to hooking up like before. <laughs> so this is good news. That is, that good, is good news. Good. It's surprising tell, good. tell us that website again. Dating in the age of COVID-19.com. Okay. 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 Interesting. That's great. So, so I, well, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but I, you talked about the different dating websites. What, which ones are the best ones to go to for relationships or, or even marriage? Well, it's really. Or are they all pretty good at it now? <laughs> they're all, they're all getting better at it. Um, there are over two thousand, over twenty five hundred dating apps. So there really isn't a one size fits all formula. And of course, it's the question everybody asks me, Julie, what's the best dating site? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it really matters about what's the best dating site for you today based upon your goals. And I think it's important to find a dating app or site that's been around for a while that has a significant number of members and um, dating apps that take safety very seriously. A lot of them you'll see dating, you'll see dating safety advice. And there's right. a lot of dating safety advice on, on my site on cyberdatingexpert.com. But I think it's important to know that, that there are so many sites, so try one and then add in, roll in two more, but don't ever, don't ever log on to more than three dating apps at one time because you'll be so overwhelmed and frustrated <laughs> that you'll just, you know, you'll just quit. We need to keep you motivated. <laughs> so, so, so let's take a, a scenario here where we take, let's say we take someone that's above 18 and under 30, and you are going to coach them. What advice would you give them on creating their online profile? And my number one piece of advice really goes down to the photographs. Um, I go on photo shoots with my clients because you're really only as attractive as your least attractive photo. <laughs> oh, that's and, a good <laughs> Don't we know and that? Men, <laughs> and men and women, you know, are very visual these days. And so if, you know, if someone has a photo and it's a selfie or it's over filtered, it's just not going to look authentic. Right. If someone has a picture, as I said, you know, the selfie in the bathroom is, you know, without the men, without wearing the shirts. I mean, what's, right. what's up with that? They've got to stop that. <laughs> women get so turned off. So you could have five great photos. And then the sixth one could be the one where you have like your arms around all of your friends and it's confusing and it's also makes you look like a player. So, mm. so remember that you need to make sure that all six photos represent what you will look like when you show up on a date. So, so when you go out to shoot with them on, you know, to do this photo shoot, do you get pictures of them doing things or that, you know, these, I, I'm assuming these are not, you know, set, you know, like a, uh, a photo shoot in a studio kind of thing. You go out with them to get pictures of them doing things that they enjoy. Their activities that activities. they participate in. Yes. So it's not like a LinkedIn profile. It's not your headshot bio. It is more a question of where would you go if you were on a first date? If hmm. you like to go for coffee, have a picture of someone, someone taking a photo of you sipping your cup of Java at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you love to hike, one of the things that we do often is we go to a hiking trail 
and yeah. you wear your casual clothes and it just shows you you know on the hike now you don't necessarily have to climb the hill but you just have to look the part like you're ready to go on a hike and that right. you'd be willing to go on a hiking date um right. if you like to bike ride a photo with your bike but basically each profile, the number one thing is like for women, I always say, wear red. I'm wearing red. It's the color of love. And it's <laughs> right. the color that most people actually uh, respond to on a dating yeah. profile because the little black dress is just so boring and cliche and right. everyone's seen too many of them. Right. So after you have your, you know, your headshot, you know, which is really important to have just the headshot with a nice big smile and, you know, show the teeth, be nice smile. Then after that, you have to make sure that you have a full length body shot because if every Very photo important. is a headshot, Very important. every photo is a headshot, people, the default position is, oh, they're hiding something. <laughs> How much do they weigh? How much do they weigh? And I know it sounds superficial, but you need to show whatever your body looks like, you know, with your clothes on. That's really, you know, the authentic part of being well, yourself you in are. a dating profile. Right. Now, now yeah. getting back to the, you mentioned wearing red. I, I saw on one of your uh, interviews, I, I think it was with, uh, it might have been with Access Hollywood. That, that you were saying that you, people get more right swipes when they wear red than any other color. That is correct. And there was there were several research studies done that shows that women who wear red have not just more white swipes and matches, um, and they go on more first dates, but actually the men spend more money on the first dates with somebody who shows up wearing red. Wow. So it's not that so, blondes uh, have more fun, <laughs> it's, it's people who wear red have more fun. Wow. See, that's bad right. for us because our arch enemy is the University of Utah, so nobody wants to wear red. Nobody wears red campus. around here. Yeah, we're going to have to make a switch here. <laughs> Apparently, they have more fun up at the U than we do. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so that's, is it the same with men? Is there, a, a, or is there no color? Is there no... No, I, for men, I, I really think it looks great when men wear like a blue t-shirt, you know, like a fitted blue t-shirt. I see we have blue t-shirt and jeans. You. You're looking Thank good. You. Too bad you, but you take it. Yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, wearing white, a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt, I mean, you're going to look like everyone else's profile. So put on some color. And even if your favorite color happens to be green, um, but wear green, wear maroon, wear navy blue, wear royal blue. Royal blue will really pop. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. That's very Interesting. cool. Well, what about the what about like the kickoff statement? What about the profile name? I mean, how do how do they really grab attention online? Any you know, advice, I used to love the catchy. <laughs> I used to love creating catchy profile names for people. It would be hiker girl and wherever they live or mine was piano baby because i played the baby you know baby grand nice. piano but i think you know the shift in the last several years has been towards especially because with mobile apps using your regular first name your real oh, okay. first name and is that so sa is it so safe my, to do that or it's just a first name okay yeah so it's safe because keep in mind it's just a profile you're just chatting with somebody you haven't met them yet you haven't opened your wallet, you know, you haven't gone on a date yet. Um, so I think it's important to show the authentic side of yourself. So use your first name. Um, you don't use your last name. You don't say where you live. You don't, you don't give any <laughs> kind of, you know, information about your bank accounts and credit cards. It's just the first name. So somebody can address you and say, you know, hi, Jim, how are you doing? Or, you know, hi, Tom, That's good advice. you know, it's, yeah. you, you've got a great smile. Right. And, and so along with that, I'm, I'm assuming that you're just going to write down the things that you like to do, what your interests are, what, you're, what you generally like to do about your life, and so, th so that you can connect with someone and have similar interests. Is that the objective here? Of, of That's part of the objective, but I like to elaborate. So if someone says, I like beach walks and hiking, and I can go from jeans to black tie, it's, it's so cliche, and people have seen it on way <laughs> right. too many profiles. So if you do like to hike, say, I like to hike and, and then name the canyon. Just say, you know, I love to cook and my favorite dish is, you know, is, is making chicken Parmesan. So be, make it very specific. And don't say you like to travel, but talk about one of your dream trips that you'd love to go on or one of the trips that you went on that was so memorable at a very unique place. Because then somebody could say, gee, I've always been interested in going to Brazil as well. Yeah, or I've been there too. That's a real conversation starter. Right. So so uh, females, photos, six good photos, 
at least in one of them were red, probably not in all of them unless you work for <laughs> Santa, um, and, or you go to the U. Um, and uh, then in your bio, you're going to be very specific in listing the things that you like to do, what your interests are, and a little bit of background about you that is, is not identifiable. And for a male, similar thing, six good photos wearing color rather than black or white with your shirt on. <laughs> and and, and uh, then three, uh, uh, three dating apps maximum that you're going to join. And, and so now that you've got this, and what do you do if you're not getting any traction? No hits. What do, what's your advice to someone who's not getting any hits? Well, sometimes the reason that you're not getting matches is because your parameters are too narrow. Um, I once was working with a woman who said she only wanted to date someone that lived within 10 miles from where she lived. And I said, well, how many miles is the airport away from you? And she said, 20. I said, well, would you meet somebody <laughs> in the airport that you like? So you need to look at your parameters and you need to say, am I too narrow? Is my wish list just so short? And, or is it too big? Do I have so many demanding things that nobody can meet my expectations? You want to be, you know, interesting, and you want to be someone that, you know, would bring something unique to the table. So if you're in photos and you're smiling and you're happy and you're talking about what you like to do, and you also make suggestions on what would be a great first date, so you give people a hint on where to take you, then you should be able to make um, a match or two or ten or a hundred. Now, now, I understand that you do something called a mobile dating boot camp. Can, can you elaborate on just what that is? Yes. Um, my boot camps are very interesting. As I teach people how to use mobile dating apps. And we have to keep in mind that like with your mobile phones, the algorithms change all the time. But basically, I will go through their profile with them, and I will switch the order of the photos. I will figure out the prompts, which are just you know little things that you can say about you, like, my bucket list, my dream job, whatever it may be. But basically, it's teaching people how to swipe left and right on profiles and how to communicate once you are a match. What happens is sometimes people just you know, swipe and they don't pay attention, and then they don't write to a person because, oh, if they're tired, they go to sleep. So I think it's really important to have a strategy with dating apps, very similar to finding having a strategy when you're looking for a job. And when you're looking for a job, you might you know, go on a lot of job interviews and not get offered a job. Or you may send out a lot of applications and nobody writes back. And if you're looking for work and you need to pay your rent, you don't just say, hey, you know, whenever nobody wrote back to me, I'm not going to look for a job anymore. And that's how <laughs> that's I feel right. about looking for love. It's, it's a, it is a job, it's a commitment, but hopefully it's, you meet someone that you can spend the rest of your life with where a job may only last two or three years. And, and so, the idea is you just got to keep trying. You just got to. You got to keep trying. It just takes one. Horse, you just got to get right back. And on. then adjust your adjust your profile or right. adjust your pictures if it's not working. And that's some of the things that that you can help with or Julie helps with. So, so on your boot camp, when, when people come to that, is there a typical age? Are you getting people in their twenties, or are you getting people who are older, over thirty, who are, are frustrated because they need help? I, I, I'm assuming that in their twenties, you just keep stumbling along. Yeah, are most of well, I mean, the boot camp, the boot camp um, candidates, you know, the people that were in the boot camp, they were in their 20s and 30s. Uh, the other people, they, they prefer after you know, 30, 35, they tend to prefer one on one private coaching, which is the digital matchmaker program. And then I just once a week, one on one, you know, go through their matches with them. And I say, no, this guy's a player. Oh, this one is a hidden gem. Why did you say no to them? And I pulled them back into the match queue. Interesting. And, and so how do you know someone's a player? <laughs> uh, how I know someone's a player? Uh, that, that either I've seen their profile online for a very, very long time. They've had dates with people I know that um, oh. they weren't gentlemen. Or, yeah. I, uh, or I see them posing in front of very fancy cars like a Ferrari that I know they oh. don't own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would, that would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. Are there, are there uh, pieces of advice you can give um, to people that, I know that in the past, my experience was you would say hello to someone and the person, or they would try to make a connection with you and they'd say, hi, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, I, do you see that a lot? And how do we, we kind of help the, the young people out there 
to, to stop doing that? What should be the first approach when you're talking to someone or you want to connect with someone? Well, it should be more than you know one word of hi or hey. <laughs> hey, hey is even worse. Hey, it's worse yeah. to hang out hey. hey. Um, I think I think the most important thing that um, that people need to do is they need to be witty. And people might say, "I have a great sense of humor," but we need to see it and we need to feel yeah, it. Good point. So, so the most important thing you can do when you're approaching someone is read their profile in its entirety. Yeah. It's not a novel. It'll probably only take you three minutes, and find something in that profile that resonates with you, a common bond, some kind of common interest, and then write their name. So you can say, hi, Tom, exclamation mark. I really enjoyed reading your profile. And um, I love that author as well. How many books of his have you read? Ask a question. Because good, if you ask point. a question, and here it is, you know, you've only put on a mobile phone, it's only like, now you've got two sentences and one question. It's not reading too much um then it prompts somebody to say oh they asked me a question i guess i need to answer it and responding with more than just a yes or no right. so you don't want to ask a yes or no question yeah. right it's not a deposition it's a date right <laughs> <laughs> now, now with the online dating you know it's dating has always been scary you know you meet someone at a bar you meet them at a grocery store or someplace you really don't know their background you're just basing it on their appearance you actually know more about them with their online profile right. than yeah, you, you do, do meeting them in person but still there's a lot of anxiety and fear sometimes for people meeting someone online how often uh, in your world do you see where people are portraying to be something they're not online? catfishing yes is catfishing a, a big problem in cyber in online dating well, we all hope for truth in advertising, and there, <laughs> there is catfishing going on, but it's not the majority. If 90% of the people online are truly looking for a relationship oh. and 10% are pretending to be someone else, we have to sift past those 10%, report those profiles to the dating app as suspicious, and move on to the next. Interesting. So along that, what are some of the red flags that you see with dating? And then, uh, you know, how do you feel safe when you meet that date, that person for the first time? What was what's some advice that you have? Well, let's start with some of the red flags. I mean, for starters, there are people that put up profiles and then don't put up a profile photo at all. Oh, yeah. It's like right. a naked profile. Yeah. So if somebody thinks that they're too important and that they shouldn't be seen, then they're not for you. And if someone does have a fake profile out there, they're not going to put up a photo if they're not recognizable or they don't think that anybody's going to respond. So back to the photos, if somebody puts up photos, they're all blurry. It's like, why is every photo blurry? <laughs> why can't we get a clear shot? Hiding something. What are you hiding? It's always right. the question of what if you're hiding. And then it's a question of also looking at profiles where you can tell they're 10 to 15 years old. Uh, you can tell if it's a prom shot or not. So, <laughs> so it's important to know that when was that photo taken was it captioned. So if the photos don't look recent, and that's why with mm -hmm. photos, I always caption them and say, okay, taken in 2021, taken in 2022. Good and this suggestion. gives somebody a good right. sense of saying, okay, this is what they look like now. And yes, they did put in one photo from a wedding they went to 10 years ago, but they captioned it and said it, it was 2012. See, I, I see on Facebook sometimes people put up one of their baby photos. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming that probably wouldn't be the best thing to do in an online dating. No. Yeah. So what about the idea with safety? I know I, we, Bob and I work with a lot of young women uh, here in school, and they've told me they just, you know, I don't like online dating. I just don't feel safe. I don't, I meet someone. I just don't feel safe. What, what precautions or what advice do you give these young women um, so they feel a little more comfortable online dating? Well, I think it's important to realize that there used to be a very big stigma, certainly when I first started doing this over 25 years ago, and that has dissipated because now the boy and the girl next door and celebrities are online. So if everybody's online right now, and it is the number one way that couples are meeting, twice as many couples meeting are meeting online now than through friends of friends. So you have to say and follow the numbers. This is, this is the new way and the way for people to meet. Um, but make sure when you are communicating that you don't give your last name, you don't give your home address. When you decide to meet someone, don't just blindly go on the date with them. 
hop on a phone call and have what I call a pre-date, a phone date. And a lot of people I know, they just like to text and they don't like to chat, but it is important to hear the sound of someone's voice. And if you feel comfortable in a phone conversation with them, then chances are you will feel comfortable on the date. And the only purpose of this phone conversation is to make you feel safe and to make you say, you know, my goal on this phone call is to spend 20 minutes with someone and decide whether I want to go on a date or not. And if you wow. don't just say, thank advice. you for your yeah. time, thank you for your time. And uh, I don't think we're fit. I don't think we have enough in common, but I wish you well, take the high road <laughs> and then move on to the next. This is, I, mean, that, I have to tell you that that is absolutely amazing advice. Um, I, I have gone through this process, but I also know that, and I tell the kids all the time, talk in the app or chat in the app. Then if you feel comfortable, text. And then at some point you have to go from the text to the talking on the phone. And you have to hear the person's voice. You have to get to know them before you ever meet them and go out to dinner. I just think that's a really important step that a lot of young people today are missing is that, that talking on the phone. I think they think that that uh, phone uh, app is just an annoying thing on their telephone is that they don't wanna have to use. But uh, Julie, I just think it's just amazing advice to tell these, tell these young people that you have to talk on the phone. You do, and then those are the stages of digital dating that actually work and help women feel safe. And so um, if you look at Bumble app, for instance, they have, you can not even give somebody your phone number and you can just start a phone call and and you will not know, they will not you know your number, you will not know their number, but you know that you'll be chatting with Jeff who you've been texting with on Bumble. And if you can set up a, a, a phone call date um, and hear the sound of someone's voice, or you can even leave an audio message and just say, you know, hi Julie, you know, I really enjoyed texting with you yesterday. I just thought I'd you know, say good night and sweet dreams. And then you hear someone's voice. Oh, that's and that's great. really a comforting thing to do to hear. That's really great. That's great advice for for being yeah. safe. I hundred percent agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Now, Julie, just kind of uh, in reflection, you've been doing this for twenty five years for yourself and for numerous other clients, and you've seen technology change and improve. In your opinion, is it better now the dating culture than it was before the technology, or have we stepped backwards? I, I, is it? Are people who are dating right now are they having a better experience than they did when you than, than they did before the technology allowed to you to connect on apps, or would it be better if we were back in the old days? Well, I don't know that we can go back to dinosaur days. So the <laughs> pros are you you will meet more people, you will go on more dates, you will learn more about yourself, what you're looking for and you'll be able to more quickly determine whether somebody is not a match for you or whether you want to go on a second date. And that's the only point of a first date is just to say, do I like this person enough to go on a second date? Right. So where it helps is you'll meet people that you wouldn't have normally met because your friends aren't setting up. So that's a great right. thing. And it's available 24 hours a day. So that's a great thing. Yeah. The downside is, is if you get caught up on the fact that there's too many options out there you might not go on any dates because you're always looking for something better. Oh. Yeah, that's a problem. We, yeah, we see that so, all the time. Yeah, we do. It, the grass is always greener. Mm -hmm. I, I like this uh, guy or this girl, but somebody better might come along. So. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, and I think that's one of the things about our podcast. We call it "It's Just Dinner" because we encourage the we encourage people to just go out to dinner and just talk to them. And it's more about making friends and communicating than it is really about finding finding love, certainly in, in, you know, in early stages of a, of a relationship right. and just sitting down and talking as opposed to worrying about finding someone that's better than the one that you're talking to. So right. friendship is what we believe is friendship is really important as you go through this process. And, and the other thing that we invite, advise people, uh, and, uh, you, uh, you can tell me what you think on this, is that the, the great thing about this is just meeting people. And if you make your goal just not, you know, I'm not looking for love, I'm not looking for marriage, I'm just looking to meet people, th then it's, it takes a lot of the pressure off of dating. Does that make sense to you in your world? It, it does. It takes a lot of pressure off because I tell everyone when they say, oh, they're not my type, they're not my type. I'm like, just go on a date. You're expanding your social circle. Determine if this is the kind of person that you like enough that you'd want in, as a friend 
Or would you go with this person to a Super Bowl party where you might meet other people? Right. So it's about expanding your social circle. And that's why I call it social dating. Right. Makes perfect sense. That's great. Yeah. Well, I have, a, I have a question for one of my students that I want to ask you because I think this affects a lot of people out there. It's what, what advice do you have for someone who's kind of aging out of the dating market and having trouble finding a long-term partner? They're getting a little bit older. Well, that makes, and Well, that makes me so sad. My, my grandfather got married at 87 years old. Uh, <laughs> after, so uh, my, my advice, and I, I discussed this with Maria Shriver on the Today Show, is that there is no expiration date on love. Uh, people are finding love at all different ages. Um, online dating is multi-generational. You can be in the same household and grandma could be on the dating app and while you're on a different <laughs> dating app. So, uh, so I don't think anybody ages out and I think that we need to just look in the mirror and realize that, that we go through different phases of life with each decade, but that again, no expiration date on love and uh, just know that you're always the prize. It's only wonderful is waiting age. to meet you. Anyone of any age can still wear red, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so one of the questions that the students have all the time is they talk about um, the negative uh, aspects or the negative uh, uh, stigmas that go with online dating. What would you say to those people that have this really negative opinion or negative attitude about online dating? Well, I'm curious if somebody has a negative attitude about online dating, is it because they're just in fear mode and they're afraid of it, or is it because they had a bad experience, or they had a friend who had a bad experience? Because again, the stigma of um, of it not being a great way to meet people, um, that is really long long gone. I mean, as I said, I you know, I, I can count you know dozens and dozens and dozens of celebrities that are using dating apps today, and you know, and they have a lot to be concerned about if somebody you know might look at them as you know a high profile celebrity. Right. What about people who've had a bad experience? And then they're saying, because I hear it all the time here. It's like, oh, I, I'm, I don't online date. I'm off all the apps. I took all the apps off my phone because I've had too many bad experiences. What do you tell those folks? How do we get them back involved in, in this? Because I agree with you. It is a great way to meet people and to, to go out to dinner and have fun with people. Well, first of all, I think it's great to take a break. I think it's great to take a break from social media and have a detox day on a Sunday. And if you're burnt out on online dating and you have a bad feeling about it, then you're going to log on and continue to have this bad feeling about it and you're not going to be successful with the process. So give yourself a month, give yourself two months and say, okay, I've got 60 days where I'm just going to detox from dating apps. I'm not going to do anything. And then start fresh you know, with like a new palette put up a new profile and realize that new people become single every single day. And so whoever was on that you know, didn't treat you well last time, well, some really new person just joined yesterday who's really looking for a meaningful relationship. And right now is a, a really good time uh, because cuffing season is around the corner uh, and that's when the weather gets cooler and it's fall and people are looking for relationships leading into the holidays. So that means people are going back to dating apps who gave it a break over the summer. And, and so you had something that uh, you've talked about before that you call the Valentine Survival Guide. Can you elaborate <laughs> on what, what, what exactly that is? Yeah, well, when I talked about cupping season, cupping season is the period from like the first day of fall uh, to through Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. because there is such pressure that you need to have a Valentine you need to be on a date for Valentine's Day when it's the most expensive day of the year to go out to dinner. Somebody needs to send you flowers. You know, you have all of this anxiety. So with a Valentine's survival guide, it gives you tips on how to meet someone and land a date, you know, within seven days for Valentine's <laughs> Day. And they don't have to be the one that you're going to fall in love with and get married to, but it could be with someone who also would like to find a Valentine's date. And if you don't have a date for Valentine's Day, then just realize that February 13th, the day before, is Galentine's Day. So that's a day for girlfriends to celebrate their female friendships. Huh. I did not know that. I did Galentine's not know that day. either. Well, you learn something new. Then. Every new. Well, that's great. Well, Julie, I'm t tell everybody how they can find you. Dating. She's a dating coach. She's a, she's a dating expert. Uh, tell everybody how they can find you. 
You can easily find me at cyberdatingexpert.com where there's a bunch of free dating advice and you can reach out to me with questions that you have. I'm on social media at Instagram and Twitter at Facebook at Julie Spira. So connect with me there. And if you have any questions and you have a dating dilemma, well, maybe I'll be able to answer it for you. Her website is fantastic. You guys, you need to go out and check it out. And she's just, I mean, just full of wonderful yeah. advice. I love everything you said today, Julie. Thank you so much for being here with us. And, um, and listen, guys, uh, if you have problems, you have questions, you can always find answers to those. Julie is a great expert on this. Also, check out her book, The Perils of Cyber Dating. Um, and I'm guessing you can find that on all the regular book outlets. Um, but thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, remember, you can find us on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, we're at It's uh, it's Just Dinner YSA on Instagram and on TikTok at It's Just Dinner. Um, also, you can reach out to us on email at It's Just The It's Just Dinner Podcast dot, uh, at Gmail. And you can send us all your questions and advice and uh and uh, all the, the, the questions that you have about dating. Um, but also, please leave reviews when you listen to us because we're really interested in what we can do and what we can do better. Just, just the good reviews. Just the nice ones, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, hey, you guys, remember, uh, last thing I want to tell you is just go have fun out there, will you?